Welcome, fans, to another live edition of the Cheap Heat Productions Pro Wrestling Podcast. My name is Jack Kilby, Executive Vice President of Great North Wrestling. Morris is off tonight, but boy, do we have an interesting guest for you fans tonight. We often talk about the role that social media plays in the pro wrestling business in the modern era, and this man is is the embodiment of uh, what they refer to as a pro wrestling social media influencer. He first made his mark, actually came to my attention, on Twitter as Jay-Z Flair. He now goes by Jay-Z Graham, and he is, of course, the Bojangles champion, which we will explain in detail to everyone, but Thank you for agreeing to the interview tonight, Mr. Graham. Absolutely, brother. Thank you so much. You know, first off, let me apologize to you here publicly. You know, you offered to have me on your show, I want to say, almost a month ago. Uh, I had an upper respiratory infection, coughing. I'm sure your fans didn't want to hear me cough and hack all on your wonderful show here. And I appreciate you being patient with me, brother, and, and keep pushing after me, allowing me to come on. And, brother, I'm absolutely looking forward to this. I'm always a, a fan of my fans, and I'm always grateful that people want me on their show. So thank you so much, brother, for, for allowing me to come on your show. Well, we certainly appreciate you taking the time tonight because I think it's, it's an aspect of, uh, again, the, the wrestling industry that we talk about a lot, but... Uh, really don't uh, delve into some of the preeminent personalities in pro wrestling influencing, and, and that would be yourself. But I, I wanted to start off at a, at a logical point where it, it, it seems that a lot of folks that get involved in the pro wrestling industry, myself included, of course, started off as fans. What's your background with wrestling in terms of we're – you a fan of the business growing up, and did you follow any particular territories, etc.? Oh, bro, absolutely, my man. So, pretty much, my my wrestling fandom really started when I was in the seventh grade, and uh, I would spend every Saturday night with my mother's parents, so we could go to church on Sunday morning. And my grandfather, my granddad, excuse me, my granddad was a huge Atlanta Braves fan. And anybody knows Atlanta Braves know they're going to pop up on TBS. And, and you know, I'm talking roughly 96, 97. And, you know, if you knew anything about the Braves, then you know roughly not long after the Braves come off, 6.05 on Saturday night was going to be that WCW Saturday night. Well, then my grandmother was all about WCW, my man. She was, you know, I don't know if she was all about the wrestling, but she loved the way that men, <laughs> you know, she loved the way that men look, brother. And so that's how I really got my, my start into watching a little bit of professional le- wrestling. And so I'd watch, in, in, you know, in 96, WCW Saturday Night was not the top tier program at all. And, you know, I get to school and my friends were talking about Nitro and Raw. And that's really where it, it started picking up because, you know, I enjoyed Saturday Night. That's the only wrestling that I knew of. I didn't know nothing about the WWE. I didn't know nothing else really than Saturday Night. And then as my friends were talking about it, brother, that's what started really started picking me up was, well, heck, if there's wrestling on Monday nights, I'm I'm really messing out. So then I started watching Raw and started watching Nitro. Excellent. Did you did you have any? Uh, I guess being in the, in the South and watching TBS, I I could take a, a strong guess as to some of your your favorite uh, talents. But but could you talk about any 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 that particularly influenced you? So the, the one that I really remember was what, and it, it might have been a one-off appearance, but for some reason I really remember Scott Hall and the Patriot Dale Wilkes. And you know, I don't remember if Scott Hall was actually on Saturday Night, but that was the first people that I really piqued my interest in. Uh, the Patriot more than than Scott Hall, because, and I could tell you a story here a little bit later on. But those were the first people that really just. They sucked me right in, dude. That Outsiders Edge got me. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this country. I'm a huge fan of the American flag and the Patriot, and just hit that nerve with me, brother. He just he just sucked me right in, and that's that's how I knew I was hooked. Absolutely hooked, brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what a, what a great talent uh, Del Wilkes was. Gone gone way too soon. 
So absolutely. Did you, did you ever uh, consider a uh, a run in the the industry itself, or was that something that that um, you strictly confined to being a fan, a, a super fan? So I did some managing. Uh, I did a little bit of training with uh, Seymour Snot with Gouge Wrestling. Uh, I you know I was going to give it a shot or whatever. Didn't really have the time to dedicate to actually being in the ring, even though, you know, I think I'm in pretty decent shape. I train five days a week, you know, to keep myself in pretty good shape. Uh, but, you know, I really enjoyed doing the managing deal, brother. I enjoyed just talking trash to people. You know, if I was going to be on the heel side, if I was going to be on the faith side, I love building people up drawing people into the action in the ring and recently did some ring announcing, which I enjoyed more than anything that I've done in the wrestling business. A, because I didn't have to get punched in the mouth. And B, because, A, you get a little bit of attention on yourself and you get to dress snazzy and look good in the middle of the ring, brother. You know, you know, it's every opportunity I get to be in front of a crowd, brother, I'm going to jump all on. You know what I mean, my man? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you obviously have a, a natural uh, charisma that lends itself to, uh, to the, the work, but... As I as I mentioned at the start, when, when I first came across your account on the old uh, Twitter, uh, it, it jumped it jumped out at me immediately because of your your content and and especially you know all the the championship belts that that we'll we'll talk about. But when when you first decided to get on social media, and I, I know you've you've been on a, a, a while now, what was it that uh, inspired you to to have that sort of a, a presentation? So Wrestling Belts is that kind of niche group of people that really just drew me in into professional wrestling. Um, you know, roughly around that time, the Winged Eagle in WWF and the Big Gold in WCW were the belts that reigned supreme. And, you know, the Big Gold has always drew me in. I've always thought it was a beautiful belt, but that WrestleMania 14, the Raw after WrestleMania 14, when uh, Vince McMahon presented Stone Cold with that Big Eagle belt, I saw that belt, and that belt right there just, it got me. That that just grabbed grabbed a hold of me, and that's, like, that's when I first started knowing that I was a belt mark and that I was going to try to collect all the belts that I could. Um, and, you know, being 13, 14 years old, you couldn't afford those belts. You know, there's thousands of dollars. You, you know, I, you couldn't afford those. Um, so I, I would collect the toy championship belts, and I was collecting the action figure belts because that's all I could really afford with the, you know, with the allowance that I got. And that's that's really what started pulling me in even more was because then you start understanding the history behind them. Then you start understanding the legacy behind them. And then you start seeing more belts from the past. And then you start understanding, well, what, well, this is why this belt's designed like this. And this is why this belt means so much. And you just, it's just another facet of such an incredible, amazing business that just draws you in even more, brother. And I just absolutely love those championship belts. And I had a bunch of friends that were on a, a belt form and they told me they said well if you want to meet more people brother twitter is the place to be you know that's where a whole bunch of other belt marks are and so that's, i had to jump on it my man because i wasn't a fan of facebook i wasn't a fan of instagram i was you know tiktok wasn't a thing at the time and i i just i had to jump in on somewhere and <laughs> honestly there's a bunch of people in my hometown that won't own twitter so i figured hey Here's a place I can reach out, not feel judged. I can enjoy life. I can post what I want to. and don't have to worry about your people about being in my business or whatever. And that's just, that's how it started, dude. And it, it, it grew from there. How did you come up with the, uh, uh, one of, one of the, the facets of your account on uh, X now that, that I really find cool is the way that, that you'll have a shot and it's not just you know the the average with the with the belt over the shoulder or around the waist or whatever, but you, you'll have uh, like a belt with say a coffee cup or a belt uh, posed in a particular scenic uh, manner. 
Where where did you come up with with that concept? Because people want fresh, they want new, they want to see something new. The whole coffee cup deal is with the group called Coffee Core, who is another group that was started by a good friend of mine, Seymour Snot, who you know helped me get into the a little bit of wrestling the business I'm a part of, helped me get in a part of there. And it's just a, a group of people who drink coffee every morning, and you know you got to do your own thing to stand out. I mean. You see how I'm dressed right now, brother. You got to do your own thing to stand out. And me being a belt collector and a coffee drinker, I figured, why not? Why not merge the two together? I've got 30, 40 some belts. Why not pick a different belt every morning and take a picture with it? Because, Pete, you know, there's other wrestling fans out there who enjoy championship belts. Why not show them your your beautiful collection? You know, they're they're it's belts are pretty much just art on leather and now they're getting to the point where the whole even the leather is a piece of artwork um you know I, but my newest belt that i've got is the nwa us heavyweight championship belt and the lead the detail on that leather is artwork it's just an amazing hobby and that, i feel like that's the best one of the best ways to show it off is when a bunch of people are tagged with coffee core why not have them take a look at your championship belts too Mm -hmm. One one of the uh, the really um, favored titles that are out there is the end. My favorite belt replica, which I have, is the NWA uh, Television Championship from uh, Crockett uh, Promotions. Why do you think that belt is so popular? Uh, so many people seem to have it. And then, what would if you? It, Given the fact you've got so many, if you had to boil it down, what would be your favorite title? So I think simplicity. That simplicity of that belt, because when you look at that world's television title, you see exactly what it represents. And of course, you've got the eagle on there, and that eagle just signifies dominance. It signifies freedom. It signifies strength. So that bird with its wing spread spread out there is beautiful and then you see exactly what it stands for the world's television title it's easy to read it's not a bunch of detail behind it to get all the words lost and then the side plates the side plates are absolutely perfect for what you're looking for you know it's got abc it's got the the satellite dish on there which in the 80s was the top tier technology uh cbs um, I wish I, I think the last one was NBC. It displays everything that you would expect a television title to be. You know, I think the problem with wrestling belts today, like with the current WWE World Championship, is is they think bling and you know the prominently displayed logo means more than anything, and it just does not. Um, the Winged Eagle is a prime example. A beautiful eagle, a globe. Obviously, you know it means the world. Obviously, you mean it means dominance. Is the WWF logo prominent on it? No. But a wrestling fan would immediately know, and anybody outside of wrestling would immediately recognize that belt because of who the champion was, most of the time Hulk Hogan, would immediately know that that's the WWF World Heavyweight Championship. And that simplicity is just lost in championship belts now. It, it, it really is. And I hate to say that, but it truly is. Um, and I forgot your second question. Please forgive me. No, no worries. What what is if you had to boil it down? What's your favorite belt? Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a, a tie between the big gold, you know, uh, just another classic championship belt that will look so prestigious right off the belt, uh, right off the bat, and then the big eagle, uh, the original block logo blue leather version. Just because I have such a love for that belt, because that's the belt that got me into one of collecting championship belts. So it's hard for me to, to separate the two, but yeah, th those two are the top tier belts in my opinion. Yeah. You raise a, uh, you raise a good, uh, a good question. I, I was going to ask later and that's it's, it seems to me that uh, WWE being the, the biggest organization that uh, most of us, uh, you know, first were exposed to wrestling uh, via me being a Canadian, that's all we got for for a number of years. But do you think with that 
uh, first with the uh, some of the uh, the Cena belts with the the spinning, and then they they experimented uh, throughout you know the two thousands and landed on what I think most classic wrestling fans would regard as a very ugly world uh, title. Do you ever see? I, I guess they're selling the blue version and the yellow, whatever Cody's version is now, but. Do you, do you ever see them going back to a more classic look? And, and do you fall in the camp of those that, that like myself, that, that find that belt completely unappealing? So my thing is, is I understand why the WWE has that belt, because you see so many people out there, or excuse me, so many professional teams passing around that WWE logo belt. So I know, I understand that it's the advertising. The advertising deal with it there but i don't think they're ever going to go back to a classic style title just because they know of that advertising they know that it reaches the nfl you know if the next person wins a daytona 500 gets the belt that's more nascar fans in, in, any professional sport it's just advertising for them but i would love you know the spinner belt's a gimmick deal it fits Cena. It should never have come. It's just like the smoking skull. It should have never been placed on another wrestler except for Cena because it's a gimmick title. It, it, it makes no, it made perfect sense for Stone Cold to have that smoking skull because he was anti authority. So why would he want to tote around a championship that represent Vince McMahon that had the McMahon family crest on it? Of course he would steer away from that title and have his own. And I feel like Cena Spinner, which should have been the same way. They should have went back to the Undisputed Championship belt. That made perfect sense. But do I ever think they'll go back to a classic style? Absolutely not. You know, even my own championship, the Bojangles Championship, it's a spinner. Why yeah. wouldn't it be a spinner? It, it, it's gimmicked. It's made for advertising. It's made to draw the eye. It's made to want, you know, children to pay attention to it and what do you want from a four belt? This is what this belt represents. It represents advertising. It represents attention. It represents a prestigious brand. It's perfect as a gimmick. But as far as a championship that would rep should represent a wrestling brand, I absolutely think a spinner is a horrible idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll talk about uh, how you became involved with Bojangles and, and got that title in a minute. But I wanted to ask you beforehand, uh, originally you were using the name Jay-Z Flair and you, you had a lot of, um, how, how should I put this, uh, callbacks to his, you know, wheeling, dealing, uh, limousine, riding, kiss, stealing, jet flying, son of a gun stuff. And, and you had, uh, you know, um, the belt on uh, a female and it was, it was very, it was very Ric Flair-esque. Why did you end up dropping the flare part of of your your moniker and that sort of? It, I, I thought it was as a long standing uh, flare fan. I thought it was really cool. I thought it was like an homage as opposed to some of the uh, you know the the bad impersonations that you see. I, I thought you were you were doing good work with that. Why the switch? But I, and I appreciate the compliments there on that, brother. But so, you know, I used to rock the blonde wig every once in a while. I always wore a nice button-up shirt with a tie, nice pair of slacks. Obviously, custom suits, as you can see. You know, I, I enjoyed at that time, you know, prior to October of 2020, I enjoyed that lifestyle. I enjoyed that gimmick, the drinking, the women, the fun, all that mess, you know. But after a while... You know, in, in October, you kind of realize that that life you live in isn't the life that you want to portray to a younger generation. It's not the life that you want to live, you, you know, your legacy behind. You know, you eventually you got to grow up. I don't know any other way to put it, but eventually you got to grow up. And in October of 2020, I dedicated my life to Jesus Christ and I got saved. And you cannot live that Ric Flair gimmick. I don't care on your social media. You can't portray it in any way and be a legitimate 
sold out person for Christ. You know, so I had to change the name, brother. I had to show that, hey, that lifestyle that I used to live, I no longer want to live. I no longer want to be associated with it. So I made the decision to go from Jay-Z Flair and decided to leave that and decide to say, hey, how about the Reverend Billy Graham and went to Jay-Z Graham? Um, you know, also because Billy Graham was a wrestler, not obviously not the Reverend, but superstar Billy Graham was a wrestler. So I figured out, hey, that's a pretty good tie in. You know, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, I've been asked before, why didn't you do Jay-Z Christ? And I'm like, well, that's a little bit of sacrilege. There's no way whatsoever that I could ever go that route. So I figured, hey, Graham would be the best name possible for me to go with. And I actually enjoyed that a whole lot better because, like I said, bro, I'm in church almost every Sunday. You know, I do a Bible study every Thursday. You know, my life is so much more better now than it was prior to October 2020. And I have nobody but Jesus Christ to thank for that. Why wouldn't I change my online persona as something that reflects that? Yeah, yeah. Very, very, very sound uh, reasoning. And I think Flair himself has become, uh, just my opinion, I don't want to anger all his legion of fans, but I think he's become a caricature of himself. And when you're 74 or 5 and... Uh, calling people on in a drunken sort of a situation in a bar. It's, it's not a very good look, but I, I absolutely uh, can understand uh, why you made that move. And I think that's tremendous. Now, the, the question at hand is how did you become involved with uh, a company that I, I'm, I always stop at, I've, I've uh, got a family property in Myrtle beach, South Carolina, and I always stop at Bojangles because we don't have it up here. So so how did you get uh, involved with them? And more importantly, how did you get that uh, that title? So, <laughs> so brother, that now, you know, we talked about my, my mom's mom and dad. Now we got to move over to my dad's mom. My dad's mom was a huge Bojangles fan herself, brother. Country ham biscuits, loved them. She could probably eat a dozen of them at a time. She didn't. But she absolutely loved them. And that's the, you know, that's the lady who introduced me to Bojangles, brother. And so, you know, she would take us to Bojangles, me and my cousins every once in a while to Bojangles. And, you know, obviously we enjoyed it. Um, as I grew up, my friends, that became, Bojangles became the place we would hang out at after school. So that was, you know, especially for some reason, Thursday afternoons. I don't know why. After prom. I don't know why, but that's where we would go. We would burn Bojangles up, bro. That became the place to hang out. And as I got older, brother, you know, you can't give it up. You know, the Cajun fillets, the Supremes, the tailgate specials, bro. That's always been my jam. Love them to death. And so as I got older, obviously, obviously, you can't eat a whole lot of fried chicken and stay in shape. You know what I mean, man? So it got to be me and my ex-wife decided hey we got to we're getting older we got to get on a diet plan or whatever and i said well here's the deal i'm more than happy to do that more than happy but on sundays i'm having my bojangles no if ands and buts about it and so as you know i'm a i've been a wrestling belt collector since i was 14 years old started with replica uh toy belts and progressed from there so we would go on sundays get our bojangles and then i would just do something simple like take a belt take a picture of the belt and the food together and say hey bojangles the champion of chicken bojangles the world champion nobody does it better and you got to the point where people were tagging me and bojangles in tweets about 80 to 100 times a month which don't sound like a whole lot i didn't realize it and it got bojangles attention they saw the belts they saw the pictures they loved they loved a little bit of free advertising they were getting they loved the fact that people were engaging with it and you know it, it spoke to them and you know they hit me up they said hey jay-z look we 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 love what you're doing we know you're a super fan which i am you know and it's it's not just the food it's the fact that i have all these memories there as well so you know it it, it touched me in my heart it touched me in my soul they said, hey, come on down to the headquarters in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, they invited me down in like April of 2018. And I was like, 
you know, I'm, I'm, hey, I appreciate it, but I got to work that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. And so they, they hit me up again. They said, hey, look, we got this day available. Come on down, hang out. And then they finally started telling me what the deal was. They're like, hey, we want you to tour the headquarters. We want you to meet the people that work here. We love what you're doing. You know, we want to teach you how to make biscuits. And then, you know, we'll let y'all, we'll let y'all eat the biscuits. We'll make meals for you. You know, you'll have a good time. And I was like, all right, so. So I get down there. It's June 29th, 2018. Get down there early in the morning, walk in, you know, meet a couple of people. And, you know, they give us a tour to headquarters down there. We get to make biscuits. And as we're making the biscuits, uh, they start cooking the meals that me and my ex-wife would typically typically get. They had detailed. They had done their research. They knew exactly what sides we got. They knew what side, uh, what we got on our chicken. Like, you know, most people, and I don't know what you get when you go to Bojangles, but we would get Cajun fillets. And we would get cheese on them. Now, that's not something that's typically done in a whole lot of places, but they knew that. They knew we got fries. They knew we got sweet tea. They had everything laid out perfectly. So we make the biscuits. They they hook everything up. They feed us. Um, and, you know, we're sitting there eating, and I'm almost done eating. And a, a gentleman comes in, and I wish I could remember his name because he was super awesome. He comes in, he says, hey, man, we got one more thing for you. We want you to see before you leave. And I said, well, dude, can I, you know, bro, I'm trying to, let me finish eating my biscuit first. Dude. He's like, no, we need to go now. You know, it, it it's a rush deal. So I got like three bites of my biscuit left, bro. And I'm like, all right. So I get up from the table, got a conference room right across the hall from us. We get up, we go to this conference room and when I walk into this conference room, there's every, all the employees are there, all their corporate employees. And, it, you know, the room slap full of people. I don't know what's going on. I ain't trying to be in the middle of things that I don't know what's going on. So I go to the back of the room. Oh, boy, hollers at me. He says, Jay-Z, no, you got, you got to come up here, boy. Come on up here. So I walk up there, and they got a podium set up. And on top of this podium, I can see like a... Uh, like kind of like the shape of a belt or a plaque and they got a cloth over top of it me being the belt collector i ain't trying to get my hopes up thinking that it's a belt <clears throat> something it's just like a plaque thanking me or, or or you know i just i didn't know so i, I get on out there and he this when he starts telling the story brother and let me tell you I got some snitching friends, bro, because they laid all my life story out there. Things I had never told anybody but my friends, you know, and this guy's telling them everything. He's telling them what I do for a living. He's telling them the story about, you know, how my grandmother used to be out there. I got all the, they, didn't, they have interviewed a bunch of people who have kept their mouth shut, ain't told me a thing, they told my whole life story. And I'm and. That's when I find out that it's like 80 to 100 people a month have been tagging me and Bojangles in, in tweets, which, you know, don't sound like a whole lot, but it was enough to get their attention. And, you know, he goes through this whole spiel and he looks at me and said, Jay-Z, he said, if you're going to be the Bojangles champion, you got to have the Bojangles belt. And he picks up that yellow cloth and there's the first Bojangles belt that was given to me. And, bro, I was like, is this mine? Is it... I thought they were just going to like let me take pictures of it. They were going to leave it at the office. I was like, is this going home? me? They're like, yeah, it's yours to do whatever you want to with. Wow. And so, I, you know, you talk in, I don't know what, what your fans know, but championship belts, if you get them made of a decent quality, brother, you're talking, especially when you start talking about a spinner capability, you're talking about, Fifteen hundred, two thousand, twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars. You're talking about a good chunk of change, my man. And that's when I was like, "There is no way this is legit. No way whatsoever." Bro, I was tickled pink, brother. I cut a promo there in front of all the people, trashing that. And I don't know if y'all have them up there. I don't know if you've heard of Carl's Juniors or Hardy's. Trash, trash them. I trash Biscuitville. I trash KFC. I trash churches, I trash Popeyes, I trash every single place that ever thought about making fried chicken anywhere close to Bojangles, brother. And they had an absolute blast. And I, I had an absolute blast too. And it just, you know, and that was before the suits. That was before anything else. 
and it's just been fun ever since, brother. Wow, that's that's quite a story. What what a company for a a large uh, conglomerate to do uh, something like that. That that's an incredible. That's we hear a lot about the negative aspects of social media. Your story is definitely a positive one. I wanted to ask you about some of uh, the the wrestlers that that you've interacted with that that get a kick out of the the whole uh, Bojangles champion character. And uh, I think you you have a long-standing uh, relationship with uh, the man who is now um, one of the general managers in WWE, and that would be uh, Nick Aldis. Absolutely, so, Nick's my man, brother. And let me tell you, dude, I don't know. I don't know if you can see behind me. Uh, and, and sadly, I'll, I'll turn the camera right there so you can see just a little bit. But you see, I'm right here. I've got that ten pounds of gold, and right next to it, I've got one of two copies of the Global Force uh, Entertainment, uh, Global Force Wrestling. Excuse me, not Entertainment, Global Force Wrestling uh, World Championship that Nick out Al Nick Aldis held. So. You know, I started watching the NWA when Billy Corgan bought it, and I, brother, it became appointment TV for well, appointment YouTube for me, uh, just like Raw and Nitro was during the Attitude Era, brother. I was not going to miss an episode, and I absolutely love the fact that it was on YouTube because when I was in the gym working out, I could get through my workout, get on the stairmaster treadmill, whatever cardio I was going to do, and I could watch it, and I absolutely loved it. So, at the time. Uh, Nick Aldis wasn't the champion. I'm trying to think of what the guy's name was a champion for Nick Aldis. And I hate I can't think of his name. Tim Storm. Tim Storm. Tim Storm. Yeah. Tim Storm, brother. And Tim Storm, in my opinion, was one of the greatest champions of all time. And I knew, I know, you know, he's obviously never going to go down in the annals of history as, you know, a great wrestler. But, brother, for some reason, he just drew me in. I think it was the fact that I knew that he worked a full-time job and yet he still toured as the NWA world's champion. And that appealed to me, that appealed to me. And, you know, Tim, I found out Tim Storm and Nick Aldis were getting ready to wrestle. And I made a tweet, uh, something to the effect of, I would rather pay $50 to watch Tim Storm wrestle than be paid a hundred dollars to watch Nick Aldis. And I tagged both of them in it, took a picture of the 10 pounds of gold and put it on there. And the next thing I knew, bro, I was a block. I was blocked quick, fast, and in a hurry, my man. And uh, I mean, I mean, within minutes, I was blocked. And I was like, man, that's a, that's a thin-skinned dude right there, brother. You know? And so, dude, I was cutting promos on Nick Aldis with my Bojangles championship belt, like, you know, he can't tell me nothing, man, because I'm the champion of a multi-million dollar corporation. If you're going to be the face, bro, you got to be able to take some heat, bro. I cut promos at the promos on Nick Aldis, and I don't know how many he's seen. Thankfully, they've been deleted because I scrubbed my <laughs> I scrubbed my Twitter, you know, so hopefully he won't go back and, and watch them or anything. But, you know, I it, he just, I couldn't stand him. I didn't think, you know. I didn't think he could wrestle. I didn't think he had the personality. I didn't think he had it at all to lead the NWA to where I was hoping it was going to go. And I just crapped all on him. And I had a friend named Adam Rotella who told me I was barking up the wrong tree, that he was going to be great and all this other crap. And, you know, so I started watching him and, and boy, I was wrong. I was 100% wrong. You know, I, I crow. And uh, somebody reached out to Nick and, and told him, said, hey, you know, Jay-Z backed off of it a little bit. And, you know, he really sees what you're doing with the product. You know, you had Strictly Business. And Strictly, dude, Strictly Business, I absolutely loved. Um, and, you know, as it, as it progressed, Nick unblocked me. And um, maybe two or three days after I blocked me, he started following me because dude, I became a super mark for Nick Aldis, brother. Um, he actually put me on a diet plan that helped me lose 
uh, roughly 20 pounds. It got me in great shape. He gave me a workout plan that helped me a whole lot. Um, you know, I, I enjoy his supplements. Um, you know, legacy obviously, supplements. yep, legacy supplements. Uh, a great, you know, I love it's the creatine and the protein, uh, the, the test booster I take and the, the fat loss I take before the, you know, beach season hits, brother. It's great stuff, my man. And as you can tell, obviously, <laughs> obviously, if you're going to spend, you know, a couple of grand on championship belts just because he held them, well, you know, I'm a big fan. And, you know, Nick has reached out to me multiple times. He's, he's been super good to me. Um, you know, when I had my own podcast, you know, he come on the show, didn't charge me a dime. You know, when I when the show finally ended, he actually recorded about a five minute uh, uh, just an audio clip of him thanking me for having him on the show, for changing my opinion on him. You know, just a great guy. When he would do meet and greets, if I was at the same show that he was at, you know, I would stand to the side and, and just wait for him to get cleared up. He'd stop his line, shake my hand, talk to me, never charge me a dime for pictures. Now, I, you know, I would end up paying him anyway because, hey, bro, you're taking time. You're here to make money. I'm not going to sit here and not pay you something, brother. Free autographs. And it's just, it's awesome. You know, I, I can't thank the man enough for forgiving me and just being just super awesome to me every chance he gets. Every time he sees me, brother, I just, you know, I went from being one of his biggest haters to one of his biggest supporters. And to see him on SmackDown, brother, just, tear, dude, he's tearing it up. He's, he may, and it ain't nothing. It ain't nothing against the other GM uh, who was also a former Adam. Yeah, Adam Pierce. But Nick Aldis, brother, just in that picture he posted the other day of him flexing up in the gym, bro. The man still got it. The man 100% got it. And, you know, I don't think he'll. I, I would love to see him and Cody Rhodes go at it toe, toe for toe again, brother. They, what they did at All In was absolutely amazing. Do I think we'll see it? Probably not because. You know, you can't sit back and have him run for the World Heavyweight Championship until he starts wrestling again. But, man, I would love to see them go toe-for-toe -toe in the WWE ring, 100%. 100%. The man deserves it. He's awesome. Yeah, and I think they're doing a slow build between him and uh, Pierce. I, uh, I think um, I'm with you on how great uh, Power was when it, when it first came out, and I thought – all this was uh, incredible in his uh, role. That faction was uh, highly entertaining. And unfortunately, I think uh, the NWA made a, or Corgan or whatever, not to get into those politics, but I think they made a, a very significant uh, mistake uh, not uh, paying him what, uh, what he wanted or renewing the contract or whatever happened there. But you're right. He's on the biggest stage of them all now. And a, a whole generation of fans will, will be able to uh, experience his talents. I wanted to also ask you about, you're, you're a positive guy. You've got a, a great message of uh, positivity along with some of the other individuals that you talked about, Seymour and the Coffee Corps. And uh, it's just, it, when your content comes up in a, in a feed, it's, you know, it's, it's not something that you're gonna look away from. You're gonna, oh, that's cool. That's inspirational. How do you how do you handle the dark side of social media? People that are, for whatever reason, um, you know, make their make their mission to be trolls and be negative and try and tear uh, people down. How how do you uh, respond to that when when that occurs? So if I have somebody that's trashing me, I, I, I'm gonna look at it first off. You know, and some of the best things I ever heard is, is if you won't take advice from this person, don't take their criticism. Absolutely stellar advice, and it's true. But also, most of the people that do that are hiding behind a fake image, a fake profile, and I ain't got time for it. Bro, you don't put money in my pocket. You don't dictate what I do for a living. I ain't going to give you the time of day. Also, more likely, they probably just as miserable as they can be, and they won't Misery loves company, and they want to drag them down, bro. And I ain't about that lifestyle, man. You know, not divulging into too much, brother, but I see true misery almost on a daily basis. What this crap you talk about on social media don't mean nothing to me, brother. 
Nothing at all. Because I'm going to tell you straight up, there ain't nobody out there that can do what I do. Now, there's a whole lot of people out there that can do different aspects of my life themselves, but there ain't nobody out there that can be Jay-Z Graham like Jay-Z Graham is Jay-Z Graham. And that, that's, that's all that matters to me, brother, because I'm going to tell you like this, 100%, one day, one day, every single person is going to leave this life. And I know on the opposite side of this life, I got a heaven waiting for me with my Lord and Savior. And I'm going to tell you 100%, ain't nobody going to take that fire out of my heart and out of my soul, my man. They could be miserable. I ain't going to block them. I ain't going to mute them. I ain't going to do anything because I know if I do that, then they ain't going to see me. And I'm all about them seeing me and that nobody going to hold me down, my man. Excellent. You 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 mentioned earlier that, that you go to shows, you've done some uh, ring announcing, managing. In terms of general appearances that you've made as the champion, I've noticed on on your your account that you you meet a lot of followers and uh, you know they they always are very entertained uh, by you. They they, all, they smiles on the faces without exception. Can you share um, what you would consider to be a memorable interaction with with one of the folks that uh, follows you through social media? No. <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you, it, it, I ain't going to say it's the most memorable, but I'm going to tell you the most fun when I had was at a show close, close to my home uh, that Gouch put on and a guy had, you know, he'd recently started following me. He came to the show and, you know, just wanted to meet me or whatever. The man walked up to me with a KFC bucket and he's like, hey, man. Can you sign this for me? And I just shooed him away, right? Like, I ain't signed of that. And I said, no. I said, hold up. Hold up. This is a perfect opportunity. I said, come here, dude. I said, I'll, I'll sign it for you under one condition. He's like, what's that? I said, I'm going to film it. I'm going to cut a promo on you. And then I'm going to put that bucket on top of your head. And, bro, he was game. He loved it. He smiled. He said, dude, I'm 100%. 100% for it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And so I did it, brother. I took the Sharpie. I crossed out the colonel's face. I signed my name. I talked smack, and I turned that bucket over, and I put it right on top of his head, brother. And I, I think I kicked him in the butt, shoot him away. And <laughs> his mama, his mama texted me uh, or sent me a private message. She said, "My son won't stop talking about it. He absolutely loved it. I really appreciate it, brother." And that's that's the kinds of things that I enjoy, dude. You know, I've got if you you can see behind me. I've got the robe, I got the mask, I got the the neon sign back there. What you can't see back there is uh, a bracelet that says bow time on it that a little girl made me at a show. Never met her before. Loved the gimmick. She loved the belt. She wanted to take a picture. And you know, I don't charge for autographs or pictures or anything like that because you know I want people to talk about Bojangles. I want people to see Bojangles. You know, if I feel like if I, you know, if you want to pay me, pay me, you pay me what you want. But I, I want people to see me. You know, I want people to associate me with that brand. And so that's 100 percent what she did. She ran back to her table uh, where she was at with her parents at this show, made me made me that bracelet, brother. And I treasure that. Dude. You know, it's stuff like that. Um, you know, I had a. Uh, Bojangles did the WWE Cups. I had a, a the last show that I did uh, before I got sick. Kid come up and he was like, "Dude, I'm collecting all them cups and I just can't get the Brothers of Destruction cup." Bro, here you go. You know, take this cup. Gave him a gift card and we took pictures together. And he absolutely appreciated it. You know, it's stuff like that, man. You know, do 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 I enjoy taking the pictures? Yeah. Do I, of course, want to be in a Bojangles commercial? Yeah. You know, do I want this, this? Yeah, dude, but, you know, at the end of the day, if you ain't making people smile when they meet you, if you ain't, you know, the TikToks, the promos, you know, I have people all the time, you know, you know, locally that just tell me, they're, you know, they don't engage with me on social media, but I had a girl tell me the other day, my mama loves your videos, you know, and her mama's battling cancer, and I've known this girl for uh, going on 15, 20 years, we were next door neighbors at one point. You know, her mom was battling cancer. She's like, 
hey, you got to keep doing your videos because it's not often that my mama laughs anymore. But she she's known, you know, she knows she knows the the Justin side of me because she knew me before all this stuff. And now she sees the Jay-Z Graham side and she loves it. She thinks it's absolutely stupid. <laughs> and she gets a kick out of it. That's the stuff that I enjoy, brother. That's the fun that I see, you know. It, it's it's stuff like that. You know, I go to youth camp with my church's youth group. And, you know, I wear these suits at youth camp. And the kids love it, dude. They think it's the craziest thing ever because there's some some old dude, you know, to them, you know, being a teenager, some old dude running around wearing a, a funny suit carrying a championship belt. And, you know, of course, they know Bojangles. And they love it, dude. It's just... It's too much fun, man. Life is, there's enough serious stuff out there right now to where you got to cut loose sometimes. You got to have some fun. Why not? It's harmless fun. You know, I mean, how many other people, you know, dress up and look like a, a chicken biscuit wrapper? Nobody, brother. It's just, I, I just want to have a good time, my man. Well, I think I think that's uh, very commendable of, of you that, you know, wrestling is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be, you know, something that inspires uh, vitriol amongst camps, tribalism, and and I think it's it's important to to spread that that uh, positivity and make people smile, especially in this day and age. And it's it's a real counterbalance to, uh, for example, look at your posts and some others, and then compare that to people ripping whatever company and, and, uh, you know, fighting over who's getting the right push. I, I think we've all lost our way that way. And if it could be rolled back to uh, a more entertaining and fun perspective, we'd all be better off, which, which raises this question. You've inspired people. You're going to continue to inspire people. What advice would you give to those that, that would like to, or see what you're doing and go, you know what? damn, that's cool. I'd like to do something similar. It, it, it seems like it was a fortuitous set of circumstances, but but what would you say? I'm sure you get that question from people that you meet. How do I do what you've done? So for me, you know, I, I wish I could say it was it was a little bit of luck, and it, it is a little bit of luck, but persistence, positivity, and you know, I hate to say it, but patience and creativity, dude, you know, it. that's, you've got to stand out from the crowd a little bit. You've got to be, if you want to be a brand ambassador for a company, you've got to live a life that a company wouldn't mind sharing with the world. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I could get out there and I could post all kinds of things out of my life and, uh, you know, I could trash people that trash me. But a company is not going to look at that and think, well, that's somebody that we want on our payroll. That's not somebody that we want to give, you know, a championship belt to. That's not somebody we want to give custom suits to, brother. I mean, you know, I've got shoes. I've got socks. I've got suits. I've got belts. I've got a robe. I've got a mask. I've got pillows. You know, I mean, a, a freaking biscuit pillow. You know, I've got so many clothes dude it's insane how much bojangle stuff i got that they have given me you know and people just think that you know that they do this because of xyz and it's no it's because and i know for a fact that jose amario the ceo he sees what i post he's got me flagged on his social media when i post he gets notified you know if you go about your life trying to build up a brand Build up yourself, build up others, brother. People are going to take notice because you're going to set yourself apart from everything out there that's on social media. Because everything now is this is why this is crap, this is why you're crap, this is why everything sucks. And, bro, people get tired of that. You know, your social media, anybody's social media should be building things up, it should be making things better. And it's just, it's just not. It's, it should be, hey, let me tell you why Bojangles is the best. But other people would just trash KFC, Hardee's, and all these other people. Hey, bro, they're a business, too. They've got employees, too. they got people that's trying to feed their families. You know, and I do. I do get on there, and I'll, you know, I'll, kick, I'll kick a little bit of dirt on them. 
brother, but in the in the grand scheme of things, I don't want to see nobody be out of a job. I just don't because it's you know times are tough. I don't want to see somebody go out of business. I just don't because I know that people are going to suffer. But that's not how a whole lot of people look at things. You know, there's a lot of people that would love to see AEW shut down. No, bro, you can't be that way, man. Do I, you know? Am I the biggest AEW fan? No, man. But just because it ain't for me, don't mean it ain't for somebody else. Don't mean they ain't people getting opportunities to live out their dreams. You know, and so you want to see a brand go out of business when you got people who are who never thought that they would ever be able to do this professionally. No, man, you can't get down like that. And I'll never get down like that. You know, mm -hmm. I've said I've said the same thing. I mean, AEW gets a lot of heat now. It, the honeymoon is definitely over and has been for a while. But uh, as as I've said, when I when I covered AEW events in Canada, I mean, Anybody that calls himself a fan of professional wrestling should not be hoping for the demise of uh, a major company where a lot of folks feed their families. And I think that that, that needs to be restated and, and people would be a whole lot better off if they just relaxed and uh, enjoyed wrestling for what it is, entertainment. Correct. Absolutely correct. Well, we have uh, quickly pretty much burned through our time. I, I knew we would have a, a lot to discuss, but I have to ask not only where the fans can find you on X, and uh, I, I guess you're on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. Yeah. Now, but, but what do you have upcoming, if uh, anything, that the fans should be aware of? So I'm – the next thing I'll be at will be at WrestleCade uh, in November in Winston Salem, North Carolina, and then uh, December seventh I'll be in uh, Gastonia, North Carolina. You know, I'm always going to be on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. The Bojangles Champion, Jay Z underscore Graham, brother. I'm I'm easy to find. You can't miss the suits. I am one of a kind. I am deep fried and bona fide, brother. You can't miss me. You know, I'm, I'll be signing autographs, sending out pictures, whatever you need, my man. You know, I've, I potentially got another deal coming up on in October. I'm waiting to iron all that out. So just follow me there on social media, and you'll see the next place I'm going to be, my man. Well, Jay-Z, I really appreciate this. This has been a lot of fun, and I would encourage viewers of Cheap Heat Productions and TheHannibalTV.com Look this man up. Give him a follow on those platforms. It'll be a. Uh, I, I often look at his content on X as a uh, palate cleanser, and it, and it's just plain fun. So thanks again for coming on the podcast.